for the purposes of understanding what was going on, it was fine to have to go through all these steps one at a time. But if I were going to do this kind of processing over and over again, I really don't want to have to click on a bunch of individual lines like that. What I would like to do would be to transform this using pipes. Here I have summarized each of the commands that I gave to carry out the steps in my pipeline. I can clear, clear the global environment. I will have to go back and reload the libraries that I want to use. If I highlight all of these lines at once and click Run, it will run through them all one at a time. And here I can see my output tibble, which is great, just the way it was before. One of the problems though, is that each time I went through one of the steps in my pipeline, I generated an intermediate data object. And so if you can see over here in my global environment, that I've cluttered it up with a bunch of new tipples that I've created. Each time I did one of the steps, I made a new tipple. I really don't need all of these tipples. I only really need the last one that um, contains the answer. If I wanted to diagram the approach that I have been taking here, it would look something like this. I take some kind of input, input it into the first function as an argument, and then whatever comes out of the first function, I'm putting it in sort of an intermediate data structure represented here as a bucket. And then I take the contents of that intermediate data structure and dump it into the second function. Then the output of the second function lands in another bucket or data structure. I take the value in that data structure, put it as an argument into the third function. It comes out, gets stored in another data structure and so on. So I am basically using these temporary intermediate data structures as a place to hold the data between when it comes out of the first function and when it goes into the second one. The concept of piping basically eliminates these intermediate buckets. So instead of storing the output of the first function in a bucket, all I do is simply allow it to roll out and become the argument of the second function the returned output of the second function just pops right in as an argument of the third function and so on. So the piping operation sends the output of one fu function directly into the next one. A major implication of this piping method is that we don't need to have any intermediate objects since the, op since the output of one function is just going directly into the next one. Here are the two approaches shown together on the same slide. In the classic approach, we pass the data in as the first argument of the first function. The results of that function come out and get assigned to a name data structure, which then is passed in as the first argument of the second function. It comes out is assigned to another name data structure, which gets passed into the third function. It comes out and is assigned to the final named data structure. In the piping approach, we use the pipe operator, which is composed of a percent sign, a greater than sign, and a percent sign. We simply say, take the first data structure and pipe it into the first function take the output, pipe it into the second function, take the output, pipe it into the third function. Then the output of the third function ends up getting assigned to the last named data structure. So this is a little bit weird because in each of the piping stages, the next operation is shown on the next line but the result of the entire pipe is assigned using the assignment arrow in the first line. So you interpret this as saying, flow through the pipe 
in this direction here. And then when you finish the entire pipe, take the results and assign it to another named data structure. So if we compare the code, we can see two obvious differences. The first one, as I talked about before, is that these intermediate data structures, which are these buckets in the middle, do not exist in the pipe. The second difference is a little more subtle. Because we are saying that we are piping the output of the first function directly into the second function, we no longer need to say where the input is coming from. So in these functions here, we had to specify as a first argument of the function the place where the data is coming from. But when we do piping, we don't need to say where the data is coming from. The data is simply coming as the output of the previous function in the pipe. So when you use the pipe characters, you drop the first argument out of each of the subsequent functions because you don't need to specify where it's coming from. It's just simply coming from the previous part of the pipe.